I'm DJ Premier, and I present to you, So What's Up? Okay, computer. Run it back. So what's up? 1993 is a very, very good era. Just the whole 90s era, period, when it came to consistent albums being released with hip-hop from DOS Effects to Tribe Called Quest to Gangstar to EPMD to Big Daddy Kane to Public Enemy to LL Cool J, Brand Nubians, uh, P-Rock Seal Smooth. Oh, just so many artists during the 90s era. It's just endless. One of the most iconic artists to come out of that era of the 80s into the 90s and still stay consistent was a very, very good man. Rest in peace to the overweight lover himself, MC Heavy D, of the group Heavy D and the Boys, all right? Now, I've always been a big fan. I, I met him early in my career because I was shopping my demo. This is before I joined Gangstar. And when I was shopping my demo, they used to have a thing called Radio Day at WBLS, and Molly Mar would be there. And I was just dreaming of getting my demo heard. One day I go there, and waiting for Molly to come collect demos, which he would do on Radio Day. And uh, this is in Midtown Manhattan on the Deuce, 42nd Street, but you call it the Deuce if you uh, live in New York and know the time, that era, that era. And I'd already been up here just still making my moves, so I got to live that era of the Deuce. It's changed a little bit now, but still, shout to the Deuce. We're there, and they said, Molly will be coming out in a minute. I'm standing by the door waiting to be the first one to get my demo tape. And boom, the elevator's right by his office door and it opens. And when it opens, Heavy D is in a gray zip up, but the zip up is about right here and he had a fat dookie cable underneath. So when the zip up stopped right here, you just saw the big gold bulging around his neck. And he had the matching gray sweat bottoms and he walked off and he said, hey there, brother, how you doing? And I'm like, damn, he spoke to me. Dapped him up. The other door opens and it's Molly Mall. And I'll never forget what he said. He said, is that you, overweighter? Because everybody knows Heavy D as the overweight lover because he actually made the big man in rap be popular. Him, Chub Rock. Uh, this is before the Notorious B.I.G., but I'm gonna get to the Notorious B.I.G. in this story. But he made the big man sexy in, in hip hop, being that people like LL and, and Houdini and artists like that were really the sex symbols of hip hop during that, that time, even, even Run DMC. So he says, Biz is gonna meet us at the studio to get busy on that record. Now at that time, I'm like, what record is that? It ended up being We Write the Songs on Molly Mall's In Control Volume 1. So that's my first experience. Rest in peace to both of them, Heavy D and Biz Marquis, the Emma'sa, like we call them. And uh, moving fast forward to 1993, late 1992 into 1993, Heavy D enlisted me to be on his album, Blue Funk. I had two songs on there. One of them I really didn't want to do because, I'll explain. Let me tell you the song first. Yes, y'all, okay? Now understand why I was resistant to do this song. In 1992, Gangstar released an album called Daily Operation. I had an interlude on there called 92 Interlude and it went like this. never wanted to do a song to that. I just wanted it to be a little piece that made people go, oh man, I can't stop playing it. Sometimes you do things just to make you want to start it over because I'm like that as a consumer and a fan of other artists. Certain songs, they're so short, you're like, damn, I want to hear, I need more. What do you do? You start it over again. Now, Heavy D's tells me, 
I did two records. The first one I did was called Here Comes the Hefster. Knock that out. Then he said, I want to use that 92 interlude to make a song. Where I'm from and how we do the digging process and the production process in hip hop, we're anti bringing something back. That's just not what we do. It's kind of like unwritten code that us beat makers do. And as producers, because some people are beat makers, some people are producers, I'm both. Um, when it comes to that, I was like, Hev, I don't want to do that because it already exists and I don't want to put a beat to it and make it into a song. It's special on our album. It's Heavy D, what am I going to say? No. I said no. He said, Prane, come on. I said, no. Prane, come on. No. Prane, come on. I. I said, fuck it. Program the beat. For those that don't know, these sounds are contained on this disc. Now dig this. This is the original disc 292 interlude. I just covered it with another sticker back in 1992 going into 93 because the album dropped January 1993. Obviously the recordings were done before that. So I covered it with a sticker. So this is also the original 92 interlude disc from Daily Operation, and then it transformed into me putting kicks, snares, hi-hats, 808 for the boom, onto this floppy disk, which is then transferred into the machinery that we used back in that era, which I always explain, just in case you're late, to the S950 Akai sampler, and also the MPC60 at that time that I was using, also made by Akai, to trigger the sounds that come on this disc once I sample them onto this little fucking piece of property. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Owned by us. And when you move forward, it's a special, special thing because I, the, the song turned out to be actually uh, to my liking because I was just resisting on what he was going to put down lyrically and, and have did his thing. Now, obviously, in order to hear this version that had drums and whatnot, you got to load it up into the S950 and then trigger it with the MPC60 and record it to two inch tape, reel to reel, not digital yet. And then when you put it in and insert that disc and lay it down to the tape, this is what you get. Do like this, do like this, do like this, do like this, make it fat like this, 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 uh, uh, test, test, test. One thing that was really special about this album is it also included production from Pete Rock, Tony Dofat, who is a very underrated producer, and also another underrated producer and MC, the great Jesse West, better known as Third Eye. He was also on there, and the album was executive produced by DJ Eddie F and Heavy D. Now, there's a song that ended the album that was special. It was called A Bunch of Niggas. And that's what it was. It fit now back then in the 90s, if Guru, rest in peace as well, was on any feature, it wouldn't say featuring Guru of Gangstar, it would just say featuring Gangstar. But Gangstar is a group, which is me and Guru, and of course, always shout to Big Sugar, the co-founder. But you see it says featuring Gangstar, Third Eye, the Notorious B.I.G., Buster Rhymes and Rob O of the Great Eye and I. Shout to Rob O, of, uh, an incredible group. Uh, shout to Mount Vernon, shout to P Rock again for I and I, and shout to Graph Lover as well. And it's a classic. And you know what else? It is the first gold album, not single, 
first gold album ever was from Heavy D and the Boys. And I remember I bought my mom and dad one, which still hangs in, in my parents' house. And uh, it's special because of that, you know what I'm saying? Because I've always liked receiving the gold plaques. You know, just as a kid growing up and watching all the people that, that hold their gold and platinum albums up back in the days, I just always wanted to have at least one. And that was my first one. So with all that said, salute to Heavy D. Rest in peace. And rest in peace to the Notorious B.I.G. Rest in peace to Guru. You know what I'm saying? And rest in peace to Biz Marquis, which we spoke on earlier. And uh, salute to Floppy Disc. That's what's up.